Hi, I'm Dave Ingebrigtsen, and along with Leroy Hyatt, we'd like to welcome you to another edition of Fly Tying, the Angler's Art. And as we often do, we've got a real mixed bag tonight. We're going to tie a dry fly, a great big nymph, and a little tiny midge. We're going to start out with the, the real Grand King Trude. Uh, we're going to do the girdle bug nymph and the CDC, CDC midge, pupa. midge pupa. So if you can talk better than I can, why don't you tell them what we're going to use to tie that real All Grand right. King. We'll use a Coachman Brown. This is a grizzly dyed Coachman uh, for the hackle. The tail material will be tied with a golden pheasant tippet. The trued wing will be tied with white calf tail. The body will be a dubbed black. And the thread, the old standard six-aught black tying thread. Now, like you said, these are normally tied a little bigger. I have a size, uh, oh, I think that's a 12 in the vise. I'll go ahead and dress that entire hook shank with the tying thread. Come back to the rear, and then I'll pull one of these golden pheasant. These golden pheasant, they, it makes a good-looking fly. Oh, it makes yeah, a pretty yeah. fly. Well, you know, the Rio Grand King has always been popular, and the Rio Grand King originally had an upright calf tail wing, divided wing. Mm -hmm. uh, then they developed the trude style of tying, and it's trude, T-R-U-D-E, not true, but T-R-U-D-E, trude. And... Uh, that was developed with this down style wing, which, which is, is sort of reminiscent of a caddis, sure. maybe. Sure. Uh, it's easy to see mm -hmm. and easier to tie on. And uh, before we were starting, I was talking, I can't exactly remember, I should know what the development of that trude was. Seems to me it came about in Colorado, and I just don't remember the story no, of uh, the development of that wing. But now the trude style of tying, you can tie a lot of different patterns, trude style, by putting the wing mm -hmm. down. A I've seen wing down. royal wolf's tie. A royal trude. trude. Yeah, yeah, same thing. Yeah. yeah. All right, for the body material, I'm going to dub some black. This happens to be a black rabbit. I'll keep it real fine on the thread. And I may have to do it in a couple of steps. We'll see. And just start wrapping. Now, I want to keep that body fairly thin back here to the rear and try to build a bit of a taper as I go forward. I'll go back over that just a little bit, and you can see I'm running out of dubbing. Put just a little bit more on. Well, if you're using a sparse dubbing like you should on the thread, then you can count on adding more and sure. taping, building your taper. But uh, if you use too much dubbing, you can't build the taper. Can't do it. And then we'll start wrapping again. Go forward again just a little way, and then back over it just to build a taper. And I don't know that that taper is really all that necessary. If you just had a good straight flat body, it'd probably catch just as many fish. For yeah, a wing. I, I like the looks of a taper. Oh yeah. For a wing, I'll use some white calf tail. And again, uh, like we've said many times, most of the time you'll find these flies will have too much material in them. More is not always better. Uh, the wing is really nothing more than for you to see, and all of that hair on there will have a tendency to make that fly harder to float. Pull a few more of the stragglers out. I'll lay this on here. I don't want it to be quite as long as the tail. Now I'm going to go around the hair itself first without going around the hook. Mm. Then I'll lay it down, and then I'm going to go around the hook and hair both. That will really hold that. It will bind it w very well down That's in place. That's a good trick. Good trick. I've never done that. Then I'll clip this off and get a hackle that I already had laid out here. These are hackled very heavily. Uh, it, I'm sure it's it's used mostly in rough water. At least that's mm -hmm. where yeah, I use Yeah, rough water the fly, fly, sure. With all the hackle on it. Well, that's going to want to twist on me for some reason. I think I first ran into the fly down in southern Colorado, down near the New Mexico border. I was fishing the Canales River years oh, ago, no. 1968, 67, 67, I guess. You're older than I thought. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, I'm as old as dirt. <laughs> but uh, the nice part about that is it's let me fish a lot of neat places. But yeah. that's where I ran into the Royal, <laughs> or that's where I ran into the Trude 
Rio Grande <laughs> King food at any rate. And uh, oh, it did a nice job. Oh, it's, and a, it's been yeah. a good fly for me ever since. It's a fun fly. And you know, you could also put this in the bright green, the wind. Could. Oh, or yeah. You could put it High in the red. Yeah. You bet. And I'll put a little whip finish on it. Clip it off. Put a little ball of head cement on it. Yeah, it, it's a pretty fly. I, I really like to tie flies with that oh, grizzly sure. hackle. I mean, with the pheasant tail. Oh, that golden pheasant golden crest pheasant tail. Yeah. yeah. It's just a pretty stuff. I don't know if it's the best tailing material in the no, world, but it, it looks probably so nice. Isn't, but it sure <laughs> looks good. And that's the Rio Grande King Trude. Has the golden pheasant tippet for the tail, has the black dubbing, rabbit dubbing for the body, has the white calf tail wing, the dark coachman brown for the hackle. Well, now we're going to tie a very large nymph. This basically represents a stonefly nymph. And Leroy, I think this is primarily a western nymph. I don't know that I've ever I, seen it fished no, anywhere else. I think it started in Montana. Started in Montana. It's really called the girdle bug nymph. Mm -hmm. But I don't see any reason why it couldn't be tied in other sizes, sizes or even other colors and uh, used as a stonefly imitation very effectively in mm -hmm. other places. You could mm -hmm. tie, for example, a number 12 in uh, olive green. Oh, absolutely. Uh, would work just as well. So uh, even though you don't live in the West, uh, take note of how to tie the girdle bug and see how you can adapt it as a stonefly nymph for the waters you do fish. What are you going to use to tie the girdle bug? Okay, tonight we'll tie a black one. Now I'll have the black rubber legs. Now I've also seen this fly tied with white rubber legs. Either one will work. Tonight we just have black. I'll have a black chenille. The fly is heavily weighted, like you said. I'll use a standard 6 aught black tying thread. I have a size 8, 2X long hook that I'll put in the vise. And I'm going to dress that whole hook shank. Now in the West, uh, we tie them all the way from fours, could even be two, I suppose, oh. four, <laughs> six, eights. And then chuck and duck. Yep. That's yep. <laughs> now I'm going to weight this fly with some, the lead some wire. Some of those nymphs weigh more than some of the trout oh, I catch. Unbelievable weight. Now, but you really need them to get down on the bottom where yes. the real stonefly nymphs are. Yes. And, and you'll see when we get it tied, those rubber legs give very lifelike movement. Oh, yeah. And as far as the weight goes, now, you know, we're getting more environmentally conscious. Uh, there are, there's tin and there's tungsten, and you don't have to use lead mm -hmm. anymore. And uh, it would be a good idea to search for some of the substitutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's the lead wire. Now I'm going to put a coating of this rubber-based glue on it, uh, and then I'm going to also wrap the tying thread over to totally seal it down. I think it's a good idea. I always very heavily wrap my lead yeah. weighted or my weighted bodies. That lead may have uh, a tendency to want to start unwrapping. Start un untwisting and it causes all sorts of trouble. Yeah. But I'm going to make three or four passes over here yeah. and I know then it's going to be And then I put good. more cement on top of that. Well, I won't for this one. You sure yeah. could. It wouldn't yeah. be a problem. Now for the rubber leg. It comes in sheets like this and all you got to do is pull and one will pop off. Yeah, they're divided into strands yes. and you just pull them off. Yes. And as you say now, I was surprised you were using black because I primarily see them with white legs. And I've seen them with yellow. And you could do yellow. You could yeah. Whatever, yeah. Now the first one I'm going to tie on is going to be a tail section. Bind it down tight. So you're going to fold it over in a V. All I did was fold it, tie it down, and it's going to naturally fall into a V. Mm -hmm. I'll get the rest of those all bound down. Then I'll take a piece of black chenille, and again, like you said, this could be tied in a lot of different colors. Uh, I've seen them olives, mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. dark browns. I've seen variegated. Now, one one thing I, I noticed you didn't do, but I often do, uh, depending on the fly you're tying, this is a big bulky fly and it's already mm -hmm. got a big bulky body, but mm -hmm. if you're tying in chenille, and uh, you oh. want to keep it a little uh, more slim, then you'd strip off the fuzz between the, the threads. Just leaving and the so thread. And so that you bind you the threads down and not the chenille yeah. itself. 
And then, then when you wrap over it, you've got a smooth underbody. But of course, that's this fly that's wouldn't make any this fly, difference. This fly, which is why you didn't yes, do it. Yes, right. I did go ahead and strip it off. It's just a habit yeah. that I always do. And of course, you can also use a variety of sizes. This oh, is sure. a fine chenille, or sure. you can use a medium chenille, depending on what you what bet. effect you want and what size hook you're using. Okay. Now I've got the tail, the chenille tied in. Now I'm going to tie just a simple overhand knot in this piece of rubber leg, slide it over the hook, and pull it down. I'm going to do the same thing with two others. Again, ah, so you I, tie the front legs in, the legs in, before you wrap the chenille yes, body. Yes, and then the, I can mm -hmm. pretty well adjust wha how I want the position of the leg uh -huh. when the chenille goes forward. I hate working around those dangling legs, yeah. so I normally wrap the body and then tie in the rear okay. section, the rear legs, uh -huh. and then wrap the next little piece of body in the middle legs and the next piece of body in the front legs. Well, when I come forward here too, I'm going to be working around those legs with my tying thread. Right. I'm going to tie down around that knot I just made there uh -huh. too. If I can get my chenille back out of the way. Why won't that stay up there? And come across. Now here I'm just taking very, very large wraps as I go, come right across the top of that knot and across the top of this knot. And now my tying thread's in the front. Now here I come with the chenille. Just make sure you get a nice body, starting body back here in the back. You're right, the rubber legs can be a real pain to work around sometimes, but I like it when I come up around it. Mm -hmm. That way then I can force this leg back that's wanting to go a little bit forward. Yeah. Well, I do the and same I, thing, except I wait to put the leg in oh, when I, I get see. there. Oh, I see. Okay. And okay. then the leg is there. Now I go around that leg, and now okay. I don't have any more legs to worry about. Yeah. I put in Away more thorax and then put the next set in, and I don't have to worry sure. about all that dangly stuff. It just shows there's many different yeah. ways to tie. And it shows that some of us are clumsier than others. Well, I'm clumsy, oh, yeah, so I don't like to work around that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're getting one down there. Now there is the basic fly. Now I still have to go in and make those legs the length that I want. Now people should realize that the legs should be fairly long yes. because you want the motion. And if you cut them straight, they stick straight mm -hmm. out to the side, cut them short. And I've also seen um, them where they'll trim the front leg shorter than the middle section longer, yeah. the rear longer yeah. yet. I, I don't I, know that's, I'm how not sure necessary that, all that is. I like to have it so that when uh, the fly is done, the legs have you some bet. droop to them. You bet. Because if they droop, then they've got some wiggly motion. Uh -huh. If they're just sticking straight out to the side, I think they're too short. Now what I'm going to do is pull each side of that one up and give a clip. That way I know that those two legs are going to be identical length. Mm -hmm. And Same don't pull the rear. on them or you stretch them and then when you cut them and they pop back they're too they're short. Too, yes, right. Mm -hmm. Now you can keep adjusting that ever how you want it. Some people might like to have those legs a little shorter. Be a very easy thing just to come through and trim. It's, it's just whatever you're looking for. Also, this rubber leg comes in different sizes. This happens to be a medium size. Uh, the so smaller diameter, size, diameter. Mm -hmm. the smaller size will have a tendency more to be a lot looser, flop around. And more. it also comes in flat. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'll go ahead and put a whip finish on. Tie it down. And there's a girdle bug. It has the black rubber uh, tail, has a black chenille body and the black rubber for the legs. Well, now we're gonna go from a very large, almost gross fly, the big old uh, rubber-legged uh, girdle bug. It's not gross, Dave, the right place. Down, no. down to uh, the more sublime, to okay. a little midge pupa. All right. And this will be a CDC midge pupa. Mm -hmm. And we're making much more use of CDC now. It's a fairly oh. new material, and people keep finding new uses it more for it more, a lot uh, to improve books. flies. Yes, pattern uh, For are floatability floor. and for a little subtle motion. So we're mm -hmm. going to tie a CDC midge pupa, and what are you going to use? Okay, we'll use a black ostrich hurl, one stem from it. Now I won't use the whole hurl. I take a pencil eraser and erase the hurl off the stem. All I'm going to use is the stem. So it'll be the body with a stripped uh, black ostrich stem. The thorax will be black dubbing. The wing case and front wing section will be uh, color canard or CDC. I'll use the black six-aught dry fly thread. 
Now for this one, we're going to also use a waterproof color marker to color the wing case. We'll make part of that CDC a gray that goes over the wing case okay. itself. I'll use a dry fly hook. This is a size 16. And of course, being a midge pupa, it can be tied in any size from well, very tiny, 22 or 20 yeah. or up to uh, 12 or even bigger. Well, yeah, I don't know that I've seen them that big, but I'm sure you could. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, some of the midge pupa are number 10 or 12, at least 2x mm -hmm. long. Yeah. No, I, now, right. that seems I, silly in the east. If I tied a big uh, midge pupa, I tied a 16. Yes. But out here, when I moved yes. out here and I heard about the Polly Rospero's pupa that was number 12, 2X long, I thought, well, what in the world had he been drinking <laughs> when he saw those? But that's the way some of them are out here. Yes, it is. Now, what I've done is I have taken one of those ostrich hurls and stripped it. You can see just the stripped uh, hackle stem there now. I'll tie it in place. And as you wrap this on the, on the hook, you will be able to see that there is an actual striped segmentation with now, it. Now that's the beauty of using this material as opposed mm -hmm. to some others. You get a nice segmented effect and what I normally do when I'm using any kind of a quill or substance like that for the body is I coat it with head cement. Yes. Makes it stronger and it brings out the gloss. Now I'll do that here. I may get in trouble with it because it doesn't dry fast well, enough. You have to be a little careful uh, before oh. you start fiddling around with CDC. If you get that CDC head cement, in yeah. it, it's, uh, yeah. But, uh, it does, I think it makes the body look better and it certainly makes it stronger. Mm -hmm. And really that ostrich hurl, uh, the stem is really quite strong compared to a lot oh, of yes. other stems oh, yeah. that are out yeah. there. And glossy yes. too. Yes. Well, I'm ready to tie that CDC in. It's not dry, of course. I'll go ahead and just pinch it a little bit and see if we can't speed that along a little and hope for the best. Now I've taken one of these CDC feathers. I'm just gonna strip uh, part of that hackle stem off, or part of the fibers off the stem, and we're going to lay it in so that the natural curvature of the feather is going up back here to the rear. I'm going to pull it through just a little bit, and then I'm going to clip this off. Don't need that on anymore. Then we'll take some of this black dubbing, and again, this is where you really, really do need a very thin layer of dubbing for flies this small. and we'll build a small thorax. Now, the thorax will definitely be larger than the body material. It needs to show a definite swelling of that yeah, wing case. Yeah, larger diameter, sure. Yes. Got some long fiber sticking out there. This is a rabbit dubbing, and sometimes there is a few guard hairs mixed in. I'll just go back over that again. With using the fine amount of dubbing, or the small amount of dubbing, you can go back over it and build a well, nice little Well, in fact, you have to to build the hump, and that's sure. the advantage of using just a little bit. You bet. Now I'll fold this wing case over, and some of it did get stuck, but that's, uh, maybe I can trim it off, and tie it down. I'm going to roll this a little and just get some of those short ones trimmed off of there. Probably a good idea if you're tying these, you know, going to tie a dozen of them at home. Do a dozen bodies and put the and cement on them, put them up later. to dry. Yeah. And when they're all good and dry, then come back and finish the fly. Now with a, a gray waterproof marking pen, I'm going to come in and just dye that wing case gray. You know, these colored marking pens are very oh. handy and their artists have them available in an art supply shop or a stationery store of in a wide range of yes. very subtle color. I think I had my choice of uh, at least three, maybe four different grays oh, I could, really? have, could have bought. Okay. And you know, I've heard of people that tie their nymph patterns in all white and then they and then color them with pens mm -hmm. as they need them. I've heard guys on the stream yeah. and they want to color part oh, yeah. of the fly, they'll do yeah. the same thing. Now what I've done, Davis, I've wrapped in front of this little wing section to stand that up. Mm -hmm. Really, that's going to be for you to see it. That mm -hmm. CDC will actually help that fly float well, a little bit. A lot bit. of midge, uh, midge pupa have white gills yes. in the front. Yes. And, uh, but this is a real floatable material, and it oh, may yeah. make the fly hang slightly in the film mm -hmm. with this CDC being on top. Which is how the natural floats. Yes, it is. I'll put a little bit of head cement on the head here. I see I'm going to need to thin my head cement down a little, Dave. It's getting a little bit on the thick side.
And there's a CDC Midge pupa, has no tail whatsoever. The body is tied with stripped black ostrich stem. The thorax is black dubbing, this is rabbit dubbing. The wing case is a white CDC feather, color canard, that has been dyed gray with a waterproof marker, and then the little white wing case sticking on top. I was going to say, you know, before I fish that, I usually put a finish on and cut the thread off. Yes. But okay. Now, you may have a different technique. I well, don't know. it's hard to cast it with that bobbin. It is, too, yeah, but, especially uh, that bobbin it swings around. You know, we might talk about fishing those things, and I know on... Uh, other shows, uh, last year we talked about fishing midge pupa, but people may have missed those. It probably bears repeating. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a number of different ways to fish midge pupa now. And we, levels. We have water. to think about any water, whether we're fishing in a lake or a stream, as having different levels. Uh, the bottom, the middle, the top inch or two, mm -hmm. in the surface film and up on top. And basically the flies are either going to be in the top couple of inches of water or on the bottom not too often in the no. middle unless they're, they're hatching coming up right and emerging but unfortunately when a lot of people fish nymphs where do they fish it the <laughs> easiest place <laughs> of all in the middle that's right well at any rate with the midge pupa then this one is obviously tied to be fished in on or just under the surface Correct. if you're fishing a, a deep pupa You'll probably want to lengthen your leader mm -hmm. and your tippet mm -hmm. on a floating line mm -hmm. and use a weighted pupa and let it sink. Here's your nymph. Here's your nymph. Or this huh. pupa right or here. Or this one if you uh, put a little lead wrap in it. A little lead wrap in it. In it. Mm -hmm. But let it sink. Count down so you mm -hmm. can repeat the depth. And then mm -hmm. when you discover where you catch fish, you can repeat that depth. And but you know the long leader thing, like you're saying, a lot of people will shorten the leader even mm -hmm. on a floating line or even a sinking line, where actually the longer the leader, the more the fly will sink, the oh, deeper yeah. it will go. Well, now I use a short leader on a sinking line because sure. it'll get down, Absolutely. but on a floating line with a sinking fly, you need a mm -hmm. longer leader mm -hmm. depending on the depth. But the key word here is to fish slowly. Yes. Oh. Uh, these things come up almost imperceptibly slow, so you use a hand twist retrieve or a stripping retrieve where you just draw mm -hmm. a few mm -hmm. inches and let it sink, draw a few inches. And if you think you're going too slow, slow down. Slow down. <laughs> now, if you're fishing on top and want to be in that top inch or two of water, you can actually grease the leader mm -hmm. down to within a couple of inches of the fly so the fly will sink just under the surface. But do you find in some areas you fished, if you grease that leader, the shadow will actually distract from I, it? I don't know that I've had the problem. I may have and not known it. Okay. But it's the only way I know of to I've keep seen that, that fly where I want lake. it. Yeah, I've seen it in yeah. a shallow lake. Yeah, where it, it, it can happen, from, I'm yeah. sure. Uh, sometimes I even go down so far as to grease the thorax of the fly, but oh, not yeah. the body, yeah. so it'll hang vertically in the mm -hmm. film like the natural. And that's the beauty of this one with that oh, CDC. Yeah. Uh, boy, it's nice oh, yeah. to tip it up and float, float right yeah. there. Yes. But the key word is always to fish slowly. If you see the fish working, see the fish rise, you mm -hmm. cast out ahead of them, mm -hmm. you let it sit, and you let it sit, and if you give it any <laughs> motion at all, it's just a slow draw. And midges drive people crazy oh, because absolutely. they see fish rising all over. So they're see taking all these bugs, yeah. and they put a little dry on. Yeah. And uh, you have to realize sometimes you'll see a fish leaping clear out of the water to take sure. the, the flying sure. insect. But when they're on midge pupa, the adult comes out flying, and usually they're sipping right in or under the surface. Mm -hmm. the, the rings you see are indicative of sucking mm -hmm. out of the surface, or if you see a break, it may be the fish right. turning. Like in a lake? You'll see a fish rising, yeah. rising, rising. Yeah. You want to cast, hopefully, where the next one will be. Right. My luck, he'll be over here and next but, time. But, but don't be fooled by the broken water no. surface into thinking they're no. taking. If Absolutely they're taking the adults, not. you'll see a splash. Mm -hmm. Usually, if they're taking in the film, you'll see the rings. Yes. The spreading rings. Just and that's the tip off. Yes. Well, that's our show for today, folks. We've tied the, Royal Gra uh, the Rio Grande King Trude. Trude play. We've tied the Girdle Bug, mm -hmm. and now the CDC Midge. Pupil. We'll see you next week. Dave and Leroy have produced two 90-minute videos covering new and exciting tips on how to make your fly tying better and more effective. They introduce you to everything you need as a beginner and demonstrate helpful techniques for intermediate tires. Fly Tying Techniques Volumes 1 and 2 are available by calling 1-800-883-0124. Cost of each video is $28.95 plus shipping and handling, or get the two-volume set for just $52.95. 
You can also order the programs in this series. Each 90-minute videotape includes three programs for just $22.95, plus shipping and handling. To order Fly Tying, the Angler's Art Videos and Techniques tapes, call 1-800-883-0124. 